Yo, Tay. Yo, what's up? You have multiple successful businesses. Why haven't you quit your job yet? When you're working at tech companies, you have total comp. You have the sign-up bonus. You have the base pay, which that's what you bring in every two weeks. Or Fellas, if you've never listened to any advice I ever gave you, come here. Tune in. What's up, Cyberhawks? So in today's video, we're going to be going over some good old Tay on tech videos. Kind of him talking about cybersecurity and some advice he would give out to the people who are interested in getting into cybersecurity and in, uh, in tech as a whole. And I haven't seen these videos yet, so these should be uh, pretty good. Um, I just made sure that these videos were dealing with cybersecurity. Um, if you guys don't, you know, haven't seen some of my videos, some of my previous videos of me talking about my cybersecurity journey, uh, Tay on Tech was probably one of the people that got me really excited to get into tech especially when he got his McLaren, that mug was clean. I've been following him for a while now, and it's cool to actually be able to do a video um, on him. So let me go ahead and bring up the first video real quick for you guys, and let's get into it. I'll also be sharing my thoughts too on his advice and some of the things that I've um, gained from him, uh, watching him watching his videos. So let's go ahead and uh, start with the first one here. Never not be job hunting. Even if you don't necessarily plan on leaving your job, you should... I've been saying this. Go ahead, free play that. In this day and age, you should never not be job hunting. Even if you don't necessarily plan on leaving your job, you should. I've been saying this for years. And if you follow me on Twitter, you know I like to say I interview for fun. Do I go out and go to apply to these jobs? No. But if a recruiter reaches out to me and this sounds interesting, I'm going to entertain it. And the reason why I entertain it is for three reasons. One, keeps me up to date with the market price of the current position that I'm in right now. I would be crazy if this job offered me thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars more and not entertain it. No, I'm going to entertain it. Two, it keeps my skill updated. I know what companies are asking for. I see what they're asking for, so I can go out and go learn those skills as well. Three, it sharpens your interview skills. A lot of people stay at companies three, four, five years, and they end up getting fired or laid off. And at this point, they haven't interviewed in so long, so. They don't know what the hell is going on now, and they have a hard time revamping their their uh, resumes and just overall interviewing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's some good advice there. Let me go ahead and just go back to like right you here. You know, I so yeah, yeah. Um, the first thing I thought about when <laughs> seeing this video was keeping yourself up to date on your interview skills. <laughs> Out of all the different jobs that I applied to, and you know, trying to get into cybersecurity. Um, the interviews, um, you know, obviously something that will make make it or break it for you. But yeah, my interview skills at the beginning versus the end are night and day. Yeah. Even if you currently have a job right now and you're super satisfied with that job, that advice there kind of just going out to apply or at least to talk to these people so you can keep up your skills uh, like that's definitely a plus like it's definitely not a minus you know just being able to keep those skills up so in case you do end up you know moving to another job maybe a month or so or maybe a year or so from now if you're you know constantly staying up to date in your interview skills that will definitely help you out and you don't have to worry about your first interviews after getting fired or after getting laid out for example being so bad because you'll gain you'll have that experience so that's something i definitely recommend too also i like that he talked about the salary he talked about the skill set in the salary of the different positions so yeah if you're going out and just having your ear on the street you know either working for a job for a year or two you can get a sense of the current marketplace and that can help you out again or your negotiations for your next job. So I definitely recommend both of those right there. And, th and this is something I wish I would have done when I was um, like years ago, like when I first got my first like first job or second job. Or I get maybe ma mainly. OK, let me go back a little bit. Mainly my first job after college. So, yeah, after that job, I wish I was doing that because I probably would have already been in tech probably like years ago. But yeah, definitely like that sound advice there. And again, you don't necessarily have to leave your current job, but just practicing your ability to talk interviews is great. And getting the skill sets of what they're currently looking for so then that you can better yourself. Uh, you know, that's also a plus there too. And on top of that too, you can also use like chat GPT and other things to do interviews with. So, you know, there's multiple different ways you can, practice your interview skills so yeah definitely you know when you get the time maybe spend maybe five ten minutes of 
I, I say a month maybe or maybe a week, you know, kind of just looking at interview questions and whatnot. And I don't think that will necessarily hurt you or take too much time. Let's go ahead and play the next one here. Remember when um, I was interviewing an intern, I asked him, I was like, hey, can you tell me the difference between HTTP and HTTPS and, you know, the pros and cons for using it? Couldn't even tell me what it was. And so it's just like, if you got security plus, how don't you understand the difference between HTTP and HTTP, uh, HTTPS? Like that, that is literally like a security plus question. But when you ask them a question or ask them, have them to do something, they can't do it. And so that's why when I see certain people say they have security plus, they have this certification, they don't really, um, they don't do nothing for me. Cause it's like, okay, you can go get a dump and memorize the dump and go take the test and you will pass it. Cause the questions are pretty much the exact same. Mm -hmm. So yeah, when people have certification like security plus, A plus, net plus, um, even AWS cloud protectioner is just like, cool, you could have got a dump. Okay, yeah, and, like, those hey. are, and those are valid points. And this is something I've been hearing a lot, you know, during my journey to get into cybersecurity that, yeah, having the certifications are good, but actually having the real world experience is what you want and you kind of get in this uh what's the term like they want somebody for like an entry-level job but then they also want you to have all these you know years of experience so you kind of like in this catch-22 type of situation so if you guys haven't seen my video talking about my remote internship definitely check that out i think that's a great way to actually get some type of experience and it's like legit and you will learn a lot and you'll also be able to help out a lot of people during that internship. So you can use, you know, that month, two, three months, et cetera, that you're in that internship to learn a lot of different things about Azure, for example. And then when you're talking with people, you know, during interviews and whatnot, you'll have that like knowledge base. And also, too, you will have that on paper that, hey, I got some type of experience. So, yeah, you know, that's definitely something that you guys want to definitely look into for sure. Uh, this internship I'm talking about right now on my channel is from my Josh Matacor. It's remote. So you can be anywhere. You don't have to be like in Texas or in Cali or in New York. You can be anywhere and you can take this and get that experience. But yeah, having experience is definitely key. Going out, doing projects is definitely key. I've done some projects on this channel that you guys can check out. You've, if you go to like Google, you can type in like free project on Azure or go to YouTube and type in that same thing, maybe AWS project that you can do. And like, there's plenty of different projects. So you can go ahead and start doing those projects. You can make a YouTube channel, you know, kind of showing like your process of things that can help out too. So you can show uh, potential, you know, employers like, Hey, Got this YouTube channel right here, and I'm actually doing everything. You can see it here. For me personally, uh, I won't say maybe about what 80, 90 percent. I, I feel like interviews that I've had, they've always brought up my YouTube channel. Like, oh, that's cool. I've seen some of your videos, and then they ask, also ask about like their kids, like loving YouTube, and like advice for them on starting a YouTube channel. So, yeah, it's just kind of just putting yourself out there too can definitely help you out, but showing your skill set of the different things that you're doing, you know, that can also help out too when you're trying to get into, you know, tech and you just don't have that, you know, experience. So yeah, I think that's pretty good advice there, but let's go ahead and bring up the next video here. Somebody said it. I'm glad somebody said it and I'm glad a black woman said it. So when you're trying to make a transition into the tech industry, don't get me wrong. These salaries is they're doable, 100% remote is doable. Just due to like the economy, due to the pandemic, it's allowing a lot of jobs to go remote. And overall, like companies are actually paying. But when you have like no skill set, you have no experience, you haven't really proved yourself in this industry, you can't just really go around making these demands. I like to try to tell people why it is possible to get these type of perks when you land on your first entry level job. Don't really think that's exactly how it's going to be. Because at the end of the day, you have to prove yourself in this industry. You can't just make this. You don't have the skill set yet. You just, you have to take the L the first year or two. And once you take the L and you get the um, experience, you get all the great thing, year three, year four, make all the demands you want to make. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is another solid advice. Let me put that right there. Yeah, that's another solid advice. Even though you're probably seeing like a ton of different, you know, YouTube videos talking about, hey, you could start in cyber, you know, make 200,000 or 100, you know, K plus and you're fully remote your first job and you get all these benefits your first job and you have no experience. You hear a lot of that, you know, just so you can go ahead and buy courses because that's what like that's pretty much what that is like. They're trying to get you to buy courses, you know, or have you click on their videos and have you subscribe because it's going to be so easy because that's usually how it works with social media. If you make things look easy and like it's going to be super chill and get everybody on it, you know, nothing but positivity on it. And like, you know, you don't actually have to apply yourself. It's just a lot of good, you know, good feeling things that actually don't actually or aren't actually going to actually help you out with actually getting the job. And yeah, like for me, I'm fortunate. Like when I was applying to different jobs, like, you know, I was definitely willing to take less than I currently make. I am fortunate that I am making over the 80K and also remote, but I understand that everybody's first cyber job is not going to be that. You got to put in the time, put in the effort, you know, working on your projects, working on your YouTube channel, whatnot, working on how you express yourself during interviews. Uh, I've went through so many different interviews, uh, kind of just getting better and better and just being able to articulate your knowledge. That's another big thing too, that I had to uh, learn. And I feel like that's a lot of, uh, like something that a lot of people had to learn as well. Like you may have like a ton of different knowledge, like in cyber, but when they're asking you questions or asking you different things, you're not able to articulate it. So you may know all the things, but if you're not able to articulate it, then you kind of just, you know, back at square one. I remember talking about articulation. I remember back when I was younger, I was getting my hair cut um, from uh, my cousin's dad, actually. And he usually would like have like, he'd give me like a ball of fade. At the time, I didn't really like understand that concept or understand like the different lengths of like hair cutting. So like, I remember one time I told him like, I wanted like, I wanted like more hair on the sides, but I didn't know how to express it. Like, you know, I wanted like a two on the sides or maybe like a three on the sides. So I'm like, I want it like, like still black. Pretty much. I was saying I didn't want it like faded. I wanted like the hair black and like, he did not understand me at all. And I ended up just doing like the same haircut, but like now being able to articulate it. Now I'm able to express myself. Like, I mean, now I can show you like a, like a freaking picture online of the exact hairstyle I wanted. But now I could be like, Hey, I want like a two, or three on the sides, no fade, and keep the top, you know, I can express it better. I do feel like the way I was trying to express, I feel like he could have maybe like went in a little bit more and like tried to understand better, but hey, it is what it is. But having the articulation could definitely help you out. Um, even your hairstyles that you want. Uh, but yeah, kind of just a little, little funny story right there on my uh, haircuts. But yeah, now I can just show you a video. But I understand like different, um, like, lengths and whatnot on a um you know getting your hair cut so that wouldn't be an issue now but back then i you know i was like a i was like a kid and i understand that so you know articulation can, can definitely be good there and uh let's go ahead and play the last one right here all right hear me out if you can do 60 percent of that job you are qualified for that job because here's the thing when hiring managers are looking to hire somebody, they're not the ones who are creating that job posting. HR is. And I'm not saying all recruiters are like this or all HR is like this, but now I start telling when they are creating these job postings, half the time they don't even know what they're asking for. They're just putting stuff down just to put stuff down to, you know, weed people out. But nine out of ten, bro, you don't have to know all of that stuff. Hey, nine out of ten, you won't even be touching half the stuff that they're asking you to do. But again, if you don't have this experience, if you never really dealt with it and you're trying to get into the industry, you wouldn't really know that. Mm -hmm. So again, if you see anything on there that you're familiar with, apply. Because <laughs> 9 out of 10, you're not going to be doing other stuff. Yeah, yeah. So there's another uh, great advice here to help me out a ton. Because yeah, like you said, like if you didn't know and you used to come into this, you know, cyber side and like, 
if you didn't know, like you would just think you would have to know 100 percent of the other things to actually apply. And if you did apply and you did know all this, you probably gonna get quizzed on all of this and your whole day to day is going to be all of this. And, you know, you've probably scared that, hey, if you somehow got the job, you probably wouldn't be able to do anything. But yeah, like, 60, yeah, you know, 60 percent, 50 percent. I've heard it, even people say 40 percent of the things there. And yeah, you can go ahead and apply. And I, that helped me out a ton, just applying, 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 even if I didn't know 100 percent of the things, which surprisingly, at least for the positions I were I was applying for, I didn't know the majority of things. But like for my next job, um, you know, if I ever do uh, leave my current uh, company, I would probably for sure look into, um, you know, make sure I, even if I didn't have heck 100 percent, 80, 90, 70 percent. You know, 60, 50 percent, I want to, you know, definitely still apply. And again, like all the things they say on there are first, I've not necessarily written. IT people or cybersecurity people, uh, these things can be. Oh, wow. They did cut off. OK, we're still live. OK, we're still live. Sorry about that. I hit my mic. The screen went black there for a second. Then this went on mute. I think we're still good. Hopefully, I don't know how to cut all this out, but we're going to keep it here because I like to keep it raw, <laughs> at least for these videos. But anyway, yeah, um, you know, just applying to, um, I kind of forgot what I was talking about, like applying to different jobs and whatnot. Like, yeah, the HR. Yeah, a lot of these HR people are actually like kind of creating these or maybe they're seeing what other similar positions are posting from other companies and kind of just copying and pasting it. Maybe they get like a synopsis of kind of what the job may be. And then they kind of do their own research to then put in uh, for that job application. But yeah, like you're not necessarily hearing this directly from the actual cyber people or the IT people or whatever position that you're currently applying to. So go ahead and kind of just keep that in mind. And yeah, also to, again, there's nothing wrong with applying. There's nothing wrong with applying 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 joss matacore talked about this before some of his videos that he barely knew anything of some of the jobs and applied for it and the things that they actually talked about was more or less some of the things that he learned but also some of the things that he could learn very quickly something that could take you a week or two to learn it wasn't super complicated so or it could be adjacent to something else so maybe they're looking for something with like aws you know two three years but you know azure um, for example, so you can you could use your Azure knowledge to help you out with the AWS, you know, infrastructure, but, you know, kind of just using things like that, too. But anyway, guys, I think Tailtech Tech is a uh, great resource. If you're trying to get into cybersecurity, I definitely recommend uh, his uh, TikTok channel. He used to be on YouTube a lot or for like a minute, like I forgot, maybe like 2022. I feel like he was like more on there but definitely TikTok. he also has an instagram too definitely uh check out some of his vids right there uh but yeah yeah i will definitely be doing some more um you know reaction videos and kind of just going over some of the other uh, things in like tech and kind of just giving my experience as well with the advice do i agree with it do i not agree with it but yeah for take uh for Tay's advice on all these videos totally agree with it definitely Definitely, again, if you're trying to get into tech, if you haven't already subscribed to me, you can definitely check out some of my videos, but definitely check out some of his as well. Has some solid advice. But anyway, guys, if you haven't already, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe, and I will be seeing you guys in the next one. Peace.